Good morning, New York. Good afternoon, Tel Aviv. This is Trending. I'm Emily Francis. We have a great show lined up for you today. Coming up at this hour, the latest trend in the art world that is making us literally scratch our heads, skulls, and things of life and death. And it's International Yoga Day. We'll take you around the world where hundreds of thousands are downward dogging all together. And we'll introduce you to a human-like robot who actually thinks, feels, and expresses emotions. All right, we have two very interesting t uh, guests today who are creating a buzz in the Tel Aviv art scene. Stas Korolov, I'm gonna, ah, I practiced so many times. And Joshua Neustein, like Stein, like Oive. They're joining us live, but first, welcome, welcome. I just completely messed up both of your names, my apologies. But <laughs> Thank you for having us, for having me, for having Stas. And it's nice and to have you together. And it's Neustein. Neustein, like Oive, my last name is Stein. Something like that. So, Oy Wei is the artist in Jerusalem from China. Ah. Ai Weiwei. Ai Weiwei. I got it. All right, so first we're going to sit tight for a minute, and first we're going to talk to you. And uh, I want to hear about uh, what's going on. I know you're a very, very successful artist from uh, originally from the former Soviet Union. Where exactly are you from? Um, I was born in uh, Kyrgyzstan in uh, 82, and it was uh, one of the republics of the Soviet Union. And then in uh, 1990, we made the immigration uh, together with my parents. And uh, I was grown uh, mainly in Israel, uh, like in Akko. Mm -hmm. and, um, wow, what a nice place. Yeah. So how much of your art kind of is influenced by your childhood in the Soviet Union? It influenced because, for example, I remember the landscapes of Kyrgyzstan, the mountains, and all this. And it's I work with this, with those materials in part of the works, and it influences me. Yeah. All right. So tell me the what it means to be a multidisciplinary artist. What does that mean? A multidisciplinary artist is an artist that um, uh, focuses not on one media but on um, uh, two or three uh, different medias. For example, uh, my major uh, practice is painting, but I also make printmaking and uh, video and uh, drawing. You know, it's I, I touch uh, a lot of uh, materials. Wow, uh, very cool. All right. So tell us about your. Uh, your solo exhibit called Calvaria, which which has kind of a double entendre, so to speak. Yeah, it's uh, Calvaria is uh, mainly it's a uh, it's a word taken from anatomy, and uh, it uh, describes the space uh, the space of the skull, the space where the the brain is, and also it's a, a synonymous word of uh, the Golgotha, the the mountain that Jesus was crucified. And, uh, and you I know noticed, there's no coincidences, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah. And um, I noticed uh, that uh, a lot of my works uh, somehow touches uh, those uh, Christianity, you know, uh, my topics, and um, also the, those are materials that I work with. But it's interesting because you see themes about this and, and ways it kind of does connect to the human body, and it's kind of an interesting. It is a gap between the skull and the brain, and and you know, representing life and death, and and coming back to life. I and mean, would you say, like, what is the overall vision of your work to kind of inspire or to think about these themes of what kind of causes us no, I, turmoil? No, I wouldn't say to inspire, but uh, I wouldn't say that uh, maybe to, to point uh, on things uh, and uh, to speak, uh, to, uh, like, um, to speak about the history of art, you know, where it's themes that. Um, like, uh, like this, like this is yeah. very prophetic. Yeah. A very um, modern twist on the Pieta. Yeah. Well, we have beautiful work, and thank you uh, for coming in. And, and how long is your exhibit going on for? It's uh, about a month. About a month. Well, best of luck. Thank and you And everybody very much. make sure to check it out. And meanwhile, now thank we're going to go to Joshua Neustein, who is uh, curating a local exhibit called Panda. And uh, he is the curator of the Panda exhibit at the Tel Aviv Museum of Art. And welcome. And uh, very exciting. It has nothing to do with panda bears being born in captivity, right? Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. It's a pleasure. And congratulations on your thank new position. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm not a curator. This is just a, um, I'm just cheating on my wife, so to uh -huh. speak. Which, yeah, is, you are an which is a painter. Yeah. Yes. And um, I share my time between New York and Tel Aviv. Sometimes I have to go to a small place 
So I go to New York. <laughs> in a big city. I lived in that small right place here. too. Look at that wonderful <laughs> ocean over there. This is the difference in the backdrop is uh, and Kenny. So explain oh. why it's called Panda, Panda. and it has nothing okay. to do with Panda Bear. I, I lived here for many years, 18, 20 years, and I met all the artists which I'm showing. First of all, it's a work of mourning. They're all dead, and uh, soon my turn. <laughs> but you know what they say? <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you just said that. They say but it's that, talking about these things, but it's very so colorful. When I, when I it's came colorful. here, I was the youngest guy of that group. Okay. And you know what they say? That the man who's, who's left the last at the table picks up the check. Of course. So I'm doing this for these artists. Um, and all the paintings are hanging on bubble wrap. Okay. Just in case in if someone tries to steal them and they fall down, they don't break? Is that the idea? I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, Why? Why what? It's on bubble wrap. Oh. Hmm. I don't hmm. know. Hmm. Did I trick you? Uh, yes. <laughs> invite me again and I'll have an answer for you. <laughs> no, but you're saying a lot of it is very bright colors and bright things. So given no, that it's... These are canonical artists. Okay. They are the, the canon of Israeli art. Ari okay. Aroch, Meirovich, Aviva Uri, um, Stematsky, Streichmann. Did I forget anybody? Sure. John Bile, Uri Lifshitz. I took these canonical Israeli artists uh -huh. and put them in a totally new, young, like my friend here, uh -huh. young setting. I wanted them to be seen as if they just graduated B'Tzalel Art School. Very nice. Okay. And so... It's not such an original idea. I mean, the bubble wrap, I think, is, but the idea of mixing old and new ideas. So I took very old, established artists. Um, um, so you could call it chamber canonical. Right. Well, fantastic. Listen, unfortunately, we're out of time, but I want to talk to you more about this and uh, come check it out. Thank you. Thank you so much it's for coming. It's at the Tel Aviv in. Museum. Okay. Uh, open till October 20th. Okay. Thank you guys so much and uh, best Thank of you. luck. Uh, meanwhile, an acclaimed artist is featuring his works in Tel Aviv, and it's not the kind of art that we are used to. Philippe uh, Pasqua has the magic touch to make skulls and dinosaurs a work of beauty. We have Maya Margit. All that glitters is not gold, but that's definitely not the case with Philippe Pasqua's work. The renowned French artist's latest exhibition, Memento Mori, opened at the Zimac Gallery in Israel. I enjoy coming to Israel to visit. It's a nice, pleasant country. This morning, I walked across the beach. The ambience and music were lovely and relaxing. Originally focused on painting, Pasqua turned to three-dimensional art a few years ago. His monumental sculptures have traveled all around the world, with keen collectors quickly snapping them up. Skulls, butterflies and T-Rexes, symbols of death and the fragility of life. Pasqua's work comes from a long-standing visual tradition known as vanitas. Dating from the 16th and 17th centuries, this art form looks at the futility of worldly pursuits. I buy skulls from labs or those used by medical professionals. So I have several. Once I buy them, we scan them, create a mold, and then I reproduce some of them as sculptures. At the Zima Gallery in Tel Aviv, Curious onlookers wander in to catch a glimpse of these unique artworks. The sculptures are made of chrome, bronze, and other precious metals. Pasqua says he hopes Israeli audiences will connect to some of the bold imagery. These trees are very symbolic of everything taking place in Israel and everything that has taken place. You can definitely see the connection between the olive tree and Israel. Monumental sculptures weighing several tons were also recently featured in another major show in Monaco at the Oceanographic Museum. For the museum in Monaco and for me, the ecological message was very important. We wanted to make sure that we were getting a clear message across that people would understand. Philly Pasqua's art, definitely worth its weight in gold. And coming up next, we'll uh, take you to International Yoga Day, where hundreds of thousands from around the world are doing chaturangas simultaneously.